I'm Tom and today I'm going to show you how to add an LCD screen control panel and an SD card reader to your 3D printer for just under 13 euros, that's about 16 US dollars including tax. Why would you want to do that? Well, even though I use Octoprint as my main way of interfacing with the printer, which I show you how to set up right here, I still needed a way to work the basic controls of my printer without having to fiddle around on my phone or having to bring down my laptop. And the LCD control panel gives you just enough control for when you want to tweak or stop a print, change filament, or even just jog one of your printer's axes. And as a bonus, you also get an SD card slot, so if you aren't using Octoprint, you can use that to print files without needing to have a computer sitting right next to your printer all the time. So let's get started. Here's what you'll need. First of all, the LCD panel itself. I used the full graphics smart control because it's the biggest, baddest one out there and really isn't any more expensive than other solutions. You can also use other panels, for example in the style of the Ulti controller, but those usually have smaller and less detailed screens. If you want to buy a smart controller and want to support my videos at the same time, get one from the links in the description, it's pretty much the best price out there anyways. You will also need a way to connect the LCD panel to your printer's electronics. There are adapters available for the most popular boards, for example for the RAMs or the Rambo and they often come with the LCD panel or your control board, but you can hook them up to pretty much any board out there, including the humble printer board. A quick google search will usually bring up a couple of guides about how you need to connect everything or sometimes even the options to order pre-made adapter boards. For the sake of simplicity I'll be showing this on my RepRap Electro Rambo. You can find a review of that right here. And just like for setting up anything else like auto bed tilt compensation, you will need a readily configured version of your printer's firmware, preferably Marlin. If you don't have a version ready to go, check out my guide on the basics of Marlin to get you started. Before we start hooking things up, I placed a strip of captain tape between the LCD screen and the secondary board since it looked like some of the pins would potentially short others out. Then we can hook everything up. Place the adapter board on your main board, then plug in both ribbon cables to the panel and the adapter. Now many adapters don't clearly label which one of these is header 1 and which is header 2, but you won't damage anything if you get them wrong. Just make sure you don't plug in one of the connectors backwards. Next up we can start digging into the firmware. So open up your marlin.ino and hop over to the configuration.h file. In here you want to scroll almost all the way down to the LCD and SD support section. Now the exact options relevant to you will again depend on your specific model of your control board, but for the full graphics smart controller all you need to do to get it working is to uncomment the line define wrap up discount full graphics smart controller. And right here is a reminder that you need to add the UAGLib library to your assortment of Arduino libraries. And thanks to the fine folks at Arduino, that is now a super simple process. Download the right zip for your operating system from the link in the description, then in the Arduino software hit sketch, input library, add library, then choose the zip file you just downloaded. Done! So at this point the firmware is ready to be uploaded and will be able to use the smart controller if plugged in correctly. Again if it doesn't work on the first try, swap the two connectors and try again. Now there were two things that were still off on mine, some of which I had also noticed on for example the Ultimaker's Ulti controller before. One is that the encoder input seems to register in the opposite direction I expected to and the other is that menu scrolling feels weird and that I can precisely increment values up and down. But do not despair, I'll show you how to fix both of these. First of all, to get the scrolling increments right, head back to your firmware's configuration and scroll down to where it says if define rep rep discount full graphics smart controller and then add the two lines define encoder pulses per step 4 and define encoder steps per menu item 1 before the end if. You can either copy and paste them from a bit further down in the config or from this video's description. Now to fix the scrolling direction you need to head over to the pins.h file which is kind of hard to read from within the Arduino IDE. So open that file up in notepad or notepad++ after you've closed the Arduino IDE. 
then scroll down to the section for your particular board and swap the number after BTN EN1 and BTN EN2 in the smart controller or new panel section. If that didn't fix the scroll direction after saving the file and re-uploading with Arduino, you probably edited the wrong section. By the way, the beeper on the board annoyed the crap out of me, so I completely disabled mine by changing the beeper pin to minus one. So here's two more things that are specific to using the smart controller I bought. One, the softer contrast setting doesn't do anything. There's a potentiometer for that on the board. And two, the LCD's backlight on this panel is only enabled for a while if you press the light button, which just wouldn't do it for me. The permanently turn it on, simply move the jumper on the back of the board to the opposite side. And we're done. You'll probably still want to print some sort of mount and case, and you can find cases and knobs for all versions of the smart controller on the various 3D model sharing sites. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share this video if you know more people that could find it useful.